I can have your attention here. You know, if you're like me, I don't know if you, these allergies out here right now are outrageous. I about lost my voice. I'm just, hey, I tell you, when I got here last Friday night, now, the 10 days I was gone, I didn't have one nose sniffle. I had no eye drops. Soon as I got off the plane and got here, I could tell something was up. I mean, I was gagging and coughing and I'm, it, it, it's so bad today, I actually opened my Bible and started to tell y'all to turn to the book of Concordance. <laughs> so wait a minute, I don't know, how'd that happen? I was about to say it too, that was the problem. I, but we're looking in the book of Judges. <laughs> Concordance chapter number three. <laughs> yeah. Judges, that's where we're at, because we y'all been hadn't heard about judges now in about three weeks. So y'all probably saying, oh, thank God. Now we gotta hear it again. But things are marching on in the book of Judges. And we're getting into an era where it's about judges you don't really remember. There's the next few judges are not famous in the eyes of biblical students. We know about the Gideons and those kind of people, the Samsons and all of that, but uh, the ones we're about to deal with tonight are little-known judges, although I have to say they did have a very lengthy reign. Uh, one of them reigned 23 years. There was nothing written about the 23 years in the Bible. Uh, of the 23 years, apparently things went well. Uh, usually when things don't go well, we get a recording of the narrative of the events of what went south. But uh, in the two, next two judges, uh, 23 and 18, now that's a long time. That means 23 years, that would be, uh, what, almost six presidential elections. That's a long time. Uh, so we got uh, 23 years and 18 years. And these judges found at the end of chapter number 9 and the end of chapter number 10. And just to give you a quick uh, uh, bringing up the state here, uh, you, you know we've been dealing with Abimelech who appointed himself uh, to be king over Israel. God did not want a king at this time. God had been giving them, uh, God picked out judges to rule over them. They'd come out of Egypt. Joshua had let them out. Moses let them out. Joshua let them into the land of Canaan. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you judges that will judge you after my will. And so, as we know, when they followed the judges and they did right, they were blessed. When they didn't, it broke loose on them. They went into captivity uh, several times. And I don't mean just for a few months. Uh, we know the Midianites beat them up for seven years. Uh, there was some that went longer than that. But uh, they would cry out, Lord, help us. We're, we can't stand these uh, liberals uh, serving over us and they're turning us into a third-rate country and all that. And, and so the Lord said, okay, I, I hear you. And when they would cry out and turn from their way, he would heal them and bring them back, give them another judge. And so the formula was, Obey God by obeying the judge and do what's right. But they are a picture of Christians. We all go through this where as long as things are going great, we're faithful. But boy, all of a sudden when we get more faith, uh, we get more abundance, uh, too much going right, and we start uh, seeing things like your, your money gets better and your... Uh, your security gets better and all of that. Uh, folks get to where they start laying out and uh, recreating on Sunday. And some of the folks who never, who would never have thought they would uh, be out of church on Sunday worshiping the Lord, they now don't hardly ever come at all because they got cabins and boats and planes and golf courses and everything else. And so it becomes the God of pleasure. And so the Lord has his way of getting his people back one way or the other. And I sure hate it, but I, I, I suggest that we're probably in America right now. We're in one of those states where we're going into captivity. 
uh, the heathen are controlling it. Uh, the things that we hold near and dear and values are being uh, stepped on and contradicted. There's so much happens every week with the children. And uh, did you hear the other day they came out in one of, I think, California and another couple states where they were going to uh, start teaching the uh, elementary, young elementary school, how to have uh, sex change uh, treatment. Now, we're talking third and fourth graders. So how did this happen? Well, we know how it happens. The Lord said, you want to live like the devil? You want to disobey me? I'll show you what it's like. I'll show you what it's like to be led by the heathen. This is an absolute carbon copy of what took place in the book of Judges. That's why these Old Testament books are so relevant uh, that, that we can see how God works with nations and how nations respond uh, really dictates what kind of life we're going to have. I, I think we've lived off the lives of others. Uh, we've enjoyed the benefits of those that were before us who did honor the Lord. Uh, you know, I'm not saying everybody was saved. I'm just saying... Uh, I know back in the 50s and uh, even early 60s, uh, pretty much everybody would, would say I'm a member of some church. They didn't want to be, would you say, are you a church member? Oh, yeah, I go to first church. Or I do. When maybe they didn't even do it, but they wouldn't dare want to be looked at as somebody who didn't. There was some prestige and honor. But today, you know, it's sort of a thing where people don't want to, uh, they don't even want to be associated with the thought of church. In fact, Folks who go to church try to deny they go to church. They slip in there one hour early and get out and act like nothing happened <laughs> on Sunday. You know, let's get down there and get to the 5.30 service in the morning because we got plenty to do from 6.30 a.m. to midnight. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, I tell you. Well, Abimelech, he got in trouble. And you know what he did? He killed all of uh, Gideon's sons, 70 of them. And the Lord said, Okay, that, and, and what he thought? He thought, Abimelech said, I'm going to get away with it. He didn't want any of his stepbrothers to have any rule or reign with him, and so he appointed himself and killed all of them. But the Lord didn't forget it. Three years went by, and verse 22 of chapter 9, and Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And, of course, we talked about what happened there and how they... They first aligned with each other to fight a common enemy. And then the very people Abimelech aligned with ended up turning on him to fight him. And so uh, what goes around comes around. So he didn't have anybody he could trust. And yet he kept marching on. He was a real warrior. And then when he would go to people and say, I want you to help me. And they say, well, we don't want to help you. He said, I'm coming back, and when I come back, I'm going to whip you and beat you and burn your house down. Huff, puff, and blow your house down. So they, that's what happened right there. In chapter number 9, uh, as, uh, as you look there in verse number uh, 40, uh, this guy named Gael, who at one time was in a line with Abimelech, finally got talked into by some other people to turn on Abimelech. And in verse 40, Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt at Aruma, and Zebel thrust out Gael and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. So uh, uh, all of this is uh, a picture of what uh, happens when you align yourself with people who don't know God. Right now in America, it's, it, it's pretty sad. Uh, somehow... The Iranians who are enemies of the state of Israel. No greater enemy. Now, because oil prices have gone up and gasoline prices have gone up, our president has decided to uh, compromise with the devil. And he's trying to get Iran to work with him and, and, and get oil from them, which would mean we would be financing their evil empire. Well, then, he goes down here to Venezuela who are Marxist, anti-God communists. They've ruined that country down there, literally ruined it. And uh, he goes to them yesterday and decides he wants all because the Saudis have cut us off. And so uh, it's like we're getting, we're getting compromising situations, and here's what's going to happen. And it's already shown. We, we compromised dealing with the Saudis already. We trained their pilots and did all that. Of course, their bomber, you know, they were the largest country to provide the 911 terrorist came out of Saudi. So, and so 
now the Saudis have started holding hands with the Russians since the Ukraine war. So it's like all the people that align with each other eventually turn on each other. And that's exactly what was going on in Israel. They got tied in with the wrong crowd. And God said, all right, I'll show you. You don't want to honor me. You don't want to trust me. You don't want to obey me. I'll let you try to deal with these crazy heathen. And they are heathen. And so uh, they fought each other. And it came to pass, verse 42, on the morrow, that the people went out into the field, they told Abimelech. And he took the people, divided them into three co companies, and laid wait in the field. And look, behold, the people were come forth out of the city. And he rose up and against them and smote them. Now, do you get this picture? Every now and then you see a, a, a movie where uh, I see it where they, they have the grass, high, tall grass. I saw one here recently, I think, where the Indians uh, up in New England, they, they cut the grass and laid down in the, flat on the ground and covered themselves with this pay stalks, you know. And then when the, uh, the settlers came out to find them, they, before they let them know, they let them get right in the middle of their field of all of them, and then they all stood up. And there they were, surrounded by folks they'd walk right past. And so that was a common practice in this way. That's exactly what Abimelech did. He got outside the city, he hid himself. And then uh, when they got there, they popped up and woe is me. The people of Shechem were in big trouble. And so uh, uh, it says in verse 44, And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city before they came right to the entering in verse 40 of the gate. They didn't go in. But in verse 44, they ended up going inside the city. And two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. Now, these are the people that were trying to kill Abimelech, who at one time were working with him to kill Gideon's sons. <laughs> And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. So he said, I'm going to mess your land up so bad you won't be able to do anything with it. And that's why he sowed, he sowed salt in all their agricultural fields and all of their places in the city, their water. He just, he just ruined the place. He said, not only are y'all not going to live here, nobody's going to live here. And uh, this also is a tactic. The Romans did it in England. They'd go into Britain early on in, in the 300s and 400 A.D.s, and they'd, they'd go conquer some area, and they'd sow it with salt and just say, we're going to make this country worthless. Well, uh, I guess that would be called polluting, polluting the earth. So I guess if there was any greenies around at that time, green people, they would have protested, but more than likely, they would have been hacked. <laughs> and so, uh, verse number uh, 46, And when all the men of the uh, tower of Shechem heard that they entered into the hold of the house of the God, uh, they entered into a, an hold of the house of God Bareth. So, panic went out. Now, there was a tower. These cities had uh, towers sometimes like they were... Uh, 30, 40 feet wide or 40 feet square each side. Four, and they would build them up up to uh, sometimes 50 foot high. And so it, it became a bunker for safety. And so these men, after saw the, saw the rest of the city slain, they said, we'll get in this stronghold and we'll hold up. That's where we hear he held up in that cave. He's held up in that house. Well, here, that's what they were. They were holed up in the tower, thinking they were safe. Well, old Abimelech, that didn't bother him because the Bible said, and, and it was told Abimelech in verse 47, that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to the Mount Zaman, and he and all the people that were with him and Abimelech took an axe in his hand. Now, this is a fascinating. It, it, I believe every word of it. And God put it in the Bible. And uh, it, it's still, if you think about what's happening here, it, it's almost uh, uh, extra human. He took an axe, cut down a bough from the trees, and he took it and laid it on his shoulder. 
and said to the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste as, and do as I have done. Now that's uh, leadership. He didn't tell them, watch me do it. He said, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I want you to do as I've done. Paul said, be followers of me as I even are followers of Christ. So Paul said, I'm following Christ, now y'all follow me, follow Christ. And so that's what Abimelech did. He got taught him a different warfare. And, uh, and all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them. They were holed up in the tower and they got so much wood and big pieces of trees and boughs where sometimes uh, the two limbs go out. Remember... Uh, Absalom was riding and it, it, his mule ran up under the tr bow and caught his neck. <laughs> so it's a fork. So they had so many people cutting down the forks of these giant trees that when they stacked it up, that tower had firewood built all the way to the top. It could be as high as 50 feet. And then they set him on fire with the guys inside. I guarantee you about this time those men of Shechem's going, you know, we should have not did what we did to Abimelech. <laughs> Could you imagine inside that fortress and they felt the heat coming through those bricks, what they were thinking? They can't get out. And all the, their life flashed before them and their treachery, and that's what they were. They were treacherous. They deceived Abimelech lied to him, say we're with him, but they weren't. And so you get that a lot of times in the Middle East. You don't know who's, listen, it's not just against Americans. Uh, you got the Lebanese, you got the Jordanians, you got the Saudis, you got the I Iranians, you got the Yemen, Yemen, uh, Yemen people. You've got, uh, uh, you know, a, a variety of uh, Bar Bahrain people. And look, they're against each other at the drop of the hat. They don't have to have a reason. It's who do you want to align yourself with against these people. And now Turkey has decided that they're going to negotiate between Russia and the Ukraine. I'm thinking, I want to see how that works out. Suddenly they're going to be the broker. But a uh, lot of strange things going on in the world tonight that you and I could see clearly by looking at how it happened centuries and centuries ago. Men's hearts are the same. Maybe the geography is different. Certainly the fashion is different. But mankind is the same. Never changes. And so um, they, they burn them up. And it says... Uh, that he set up the hold on a fire upon them in verse 49 at the bottom so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. So we got Shechem taken care of. Thebes is the next place. But there was a strong tower within the, uh, the city. And thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and get them up on the top of the tower. Right now in America, the wealthy and the politicians have their bunkers. We don't. But they have theirs. You can count on it. We know of some. There's one out in uh, Colorado. It's underneath the mountains. They used to have one up in West Virginia. Uh, Briar, Briar, Briar Ridge, I believe it is called. Uh, West Virginia. It's a big country club now, but it was a bunker they built during the Cold War, went way up under the mountain. And that's where all the senators and the House of Representatives were supposed to flee to if there was a nuclear attack. So there's always folks who think that if they go somewhere, they can create something to protect them, when in reality, there's no such thing. When God is against you, there's no place that you can be protected. You can spend billions of dollars on your protection. You can build your towers and your strongholds, and you can run there at the sign of any trouble. But 
as we know, uh, uh, if God be for us, who can be against us? And if God be against us, who can be for us? <laughs> so they did that. And in verse uh, 51, they fled there and they all and all they of the city and shut it to them and get them up in the top of the tower. They'll never get us up here. <laughs> and Abimelech came in 52 and against, came under the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. Now, verse 53 is really odd. Up in the top of that tower, there was a certain woman. And she cast a piece of millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. This mighty man of valor, this great warrior, became the third one as a type of the Antichrist to have his head wounded. And in this case, it's a direct thing, wounded the seat of the woman shall wound the head of the serpent. Abimelech's the type of the Antichrist here. And uh, the millstone now, uh, most millstones were about the size of that offering plate. And of course that was to take their grain and wheat and, uh, and, and use that stick. And uh, Some of these cooking shows, they're getting kind of back to a millstone. You know, if you'll notice, they'll grind up their, their herbs and stuff, you know, and, and all of that. Well, uh, she took a piece of it and up there, maybe 50 foot up there, she looked over that tower and she dropped it and poor old Bimelech came to his demise. Now, the odd thing about it, show his vanity, he didn't want to die by the hand of a woman because people would talk about him. He doesn't understand eternity. I guarantee you the moment he died, he could care less what people said on this earth. It means nothing. But he thought, my legacy, my legacy. So he told his right-hand man, hey, Finish the job. And the guy took his sword out and killed him. Now, uh, Goliath got killed by hit, getting hit in the head with a stone. He was a type of antichrist. If you remember, Sisera, just a few chapters before, woman hit him in the head while he was sleeping and killed him in the head. And this is the third one, uh, Abimelech. All three of them a type of the antichrist. All three of them. Uh, did everything. When he killed those 70 sons of Gideon, it was a picture of the persecution uh, of the nation of Israel. And uh, his own family he killed. And so the Antichrist is going to come against the, the Jew and do what he can to kill all them. And so we got types of uh, going on while the historical facts are certainly happening. God is revealing, I believe, in the, for the future what we can learn about how the end will come. And uh, uh, Satan's head will be bruised uh, by the heel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, the seed of the woman. So uh, it says in verse 54, Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me, that men say not, of me a woman slew him you little wimp and of course that didn't go over the boys would be down there drinking out of their uh, cups big big mugs and talking you know because we already we already saw that one time one of them got on the other said you are running your mouth now you've run your mouth one of the guys said to a uh, group he said you've been running your mouth how bad you are now show how bad you are so these guys were big time boasters you know, and it kind of the same thing goes on today. You know, people get around and say, as they run their mouth about this, and wear this, if, I, if it was me, I'd have done this. You know? <laughs> well, you may end up getting called out on what we say. Uh, by thy mouth, thy words condemn thee. And the woman slew him, and his young man thrust him through, and he died. And the men of Israel that saw, saw Abimelech in verse 55, was, uh, that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man into his place. Look at this. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying his 70 brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads. And upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Zerubbabel, who is Gideon. Now get this. God rendered vengeance 
on groups. He used one group to execute judgment on another, and then he turned right around and executed judgment on the ones he rendered, and he judged them. So uh, uh, there's a verse in Proverbs said, Though hand joineth hand with the wicked shall not go. Though hand joineth hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. In other words, all these alliances, I'm telling you, Russia and China, you know, Iran, they all holding hands. and They're against any nation that purports to even worship God. Uh, and, and so they're, they'll, hey, the communist and the, uh, the uh, Islamist will fight against America because there are semblances of Christianity and Bible people. There are 50 righteous people still in the land. And so they hate us. And so they're all going to gather up and, and ally against us. But in the end, God's going to judge all of them and he's going to use each other, the ones that are allied, he's going to use them to kill each other. That's why when he talks about in the, in the Battle of Armageddon that they're going to turn on each other in the hills because he's just saying, okay, it's time for judgment. Y'all had a chance to repent. You refused to do it. Boom. You people are actually running the same tanks against my people. Now I'm going to get you to turn those tanks around and blow each other up. You know, and the Bible says, and God shall laugh at them in their derision. So he gives us a prelude to that right here in the book of Judges. He reveals his way. And so uh, it all comes around. Abimelech, even though God used Abimelech to take care of another problem, he never forgot what Abimelech did. He killed all the heirs of Gideon, his servant Gideon. And God said, I'm, when I get finished with you, I'm going to take care of you. I remember your parents used to say that when you and your brother got in trouble. When I finish him, I'm going to come get you. <laughs> no, daddy. No, daddy. <laughs> you know, I've heard that before. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it's kind of, it's always been. And uh, that's the hand of God. Now the next verse, and we don't have time to get into it, but look at in chapter number 10. And after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua. Now don't ever complain about your name. Because he's not only the son of Pua, he's the son of Dodo. I don't know how the guy overcame that. I mean, that's worse than a boy named Sue, is it not? So, uh, a man of uh, Issachar and dwelled in Shamar and Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel 20 and 3 years. So the next 23 years after Abimelech, who had falsely appointed himself king, there was no king in Israel, God said. How delusional was he? And God said, now we're going to get back to the judges. <laughs> now that you folks have made a mess out of the last 40 years. We're going to straighten y'all out and get y'all back to the my way. And so the next 23 years when they submitted themselves under Tola, there's no significant events. And that means all's well that ends well. You don't hear anything. But after he died and after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judge Israel 20 and 2 years. Well, I don't know, my, my math says uh, 45 years. Um, that would put us back about 1980, 75, something like that. And so that's a pretty good while. They had relative peace. They probably got their 401ks built back up, you know. Uh, they were buying their flat screen TVs. Uh, eventually they started staying home because they were watching football on Sundays. Didn't want to miss the game. And then uh, they got a, a mountain home or a beachside house and they said, well, we know we, we should be in church, but it's Sundays, the weekend's all we got. We don't give it to God. They wouldn't say that. We'll go to the home on the beach and we'll stay there. 
And the Lord said, okay, you forgot me. I blessed you, and you just forgot me. Well, bottom fell out. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts. And they had 30 cities, which are called havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Now, the thing about that, uh, you can trace this out, uh, royalty, the sons of kings, you know, like uh, the high roller politicians buy their kids, you know, Camaros and Mustangs and Bets. But in this day, they purchased them uh, high dollar Colts. And uh, if you remember, Absalom was riding one when he died. He's the son of a king. And uh, you'll find another place. Uh, and, and then remember, uh, the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem on a colt. So royalty rides on colts. 30 sons, 30 colts, 30 cities. Things were going well is what it appears. Uh, you'd have thought they'd have said, God's been good, God is great, we worship him. But quite the contrary, they went south. And when they went south this time, listen, I, you think it can get bad, and we look at our culture with all this transgenderism and uh, this homosexuality and this perversion and this, uh, oh, what a, what a mess. What a mess they've done. And you think it can't get any worse. Oh, yes, it can. Uh, and there's already little bits popping up you hear in the news, you know. And all this murder going on and these kids, 14 and 15, killing people and getting out like into the Wild West at gas stations just shooting on it. What's the matter? What's the matter, you know? I mean, listen, and then... Uh, people killing their mothers and then mothers killing their kids, shooting their kids, and kids killing their parents and uh, school teachers getting beat up and killed and uh, people shooting up the schools and listen to this guy down in South Florida this week uh, that killed all those people, uh, I think 25, 30 of them, I don't remember here, a couple, three years ago. And to listen to him, he still has no remorse. He just said, oh, I planned all this. He told him. He almost boasted of how he planned it. I did this and I did that and I knew I could kill this many. And they arrested a guy uh, today uh, who out west, had, had a, they found him, he had a plot. He was going to kill 3,000 fraternity sisters. They just busted him this afternoon. And he admitted he had been planning this thing for several years. And he literally was going to go around and see if he could kill 3,000. What's, I mean, is this what we've got with our free living? No Ten Commandments, no Bible. This is what we've got. And uh, we're in a mess. So uh, we read our Bibles and we say it doesn't turn out good when the nation forgets God. The Bible says the nation forgets God, he shall be turned into hell. Uh, so that's where we're at. I wish I had some good news. I do. Hey, if you're saved here tonight, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. So that's good news. And, uh, but we don't have any good news for this world. It's not good, never will be good, and it's going to be melted one day. Global warming, big time. <laughs> so we'll be on the bandwagon. Yeah, we believe in golden, uh, global warming. It's going to melt the whole firmament with heat. All right, look forward to seeing you, Lord Will, on Sunday. Just uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday we have our annual fish fry. And uh, that's coming up quickly. And it looks like things are going to cool off next week, which is a blessing. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we pray that as we go, you'd bless us, keep us, and thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.